In this video, I'm gonna share with you guys how to remove car scratches and transfer from black paint. Now let's get straight into it. What's going on? So glad you're here and welcome back to the Wilson Auto Detailing community. If you're a professional auto detailer who wants to become more successful and profitable in your business or just a car enthusiast who wants to improve your detailing ability, then definitely consider hitting that big red subscribe button right below this video. So here I am on location at a customer's house working on a Mazda CX-9, which is just a small SUV. But I want to show you guys, I've actually already taped it off. I've already clayed the paint and I've already done an IPA wash on this specific section. But I want to show you guys what has happened. So based Basically, it looks like we have scratches all the way down the passenger side of this car. So let's go ahead and see if the camera can pick it up. Starting, it's going to be difficult to pick it up because the reflection off this black paint kind of makes it hard to pick up in the lens of the camera. But basically, you have all these scratches right here. This is on the front fender, and I'll go all the way down. You see this large scratch at the top. You see some more minor kind of hairline scratches as you go down uh, right here. Once again, it's difficult to pick up in the camera because I'm looking through the lens right now and it's difficult to even see. But not only do you have scratches, but you have like these little marks that come when you like rub the side of garages and stuff like that. We've got parts of this that is actually beneath the clear coat and beneath the paint all the way to the metal body of the car. And then you have some other top coat scratches. Let's see if I can change the angle so you guys can see it a little bit better. You can see we've scratched this uh, kind of uh, character line right here all the way down to the bottom and of course you have all these scratches kind of beside it all the way down to the back uh, and panel right here is completely scratched all up here so check all of these scratches out you can see them kind of in different lighting but basically it's all the way down the passenger side from the front fender to the very back panel and I've totally taped off the car so you guys can see where the scratches um, kind of are concentrated so they're between between the tape all the way down. Uh, there's scratches all between these two uh, pieces of tape all the way to the front to the back. So let's just dissect this situation before I get into my strategies on how I'm gonna fix it. So basically when I'm dealing with scratches, I always put these readers on because they magnify the scratch. It allows me to see it better. I don't wear just my normal glasses. I wear these kind of magnifying glasses. But the issue with scratches is that as I'm looking at it, the first thing I wanna do is see if I can catch a nail, meaning if I can rub my fingernail kind of uh, across the kind of gradient of the scratch if I can catch my fingernail that tells me that the scratch is in fact beneath the clear coat however I have kind of tested all the major areas um, on the kind of major parts of the door panels and the front fender and the back and I have not been able to catch my fingernail on any of them so that tells me that all of the kind of the major concentration of the scratches could just be uh, a lot of it transfer and a lot of it just those kind of hairline top coat scratches and maybe I'll be able to fix that with just polishing and not having to wet sand anything but of course the things that are all the way through the paint all the way to the kind of body of the car I'm not going to be able to fix those things. So my first step is I'm just going to kind of look at the scratches and dissect them as I'm uh, kind of looking with my readers and I can tell that the scratches kind of that are concentrated more towards the center of where the doors connect here, those are the deeper scratches. So that's the difficult thing with scratches in that not all of them are the same. They're not all going to be equal. They're all going to be different and even different parts of the scratch are going to be different. Maybe the the, the, the first part of the scratch is deeper, the middle part is a little bit less deep, and the last part is deeper as well. So some of the scratch may come out, some of it may not come out. And so that's kind of all the difficult things that you're dealing with. There's so many different moving parts to the equation when you're dealing with a scratch. So here is how I'm going to attack this situation in particular. So I've got my little tray of things here. I've got my Griot's Garage 6 inch dual action random orbital polisher. And on this polisher I have one of Chemical Guy's Hexalogic uh, medium cutting foam pad. So this is not a heavy cutting, just a medium cutting foam pad. I want to see how this reacts with the Meguiar's 105 compound that I'm going to use. So what I'm going to do here in removing these scratches is I'm going to go least aggressive method to the most aggressive method. So I also have some 2000 grit uh, sandpaper here in case I do have to wet sand any of this. But we're going to start with Meguiar's 105 uh, heavy cutting compound, their ultra cut compound. I'm going to see how much uh, of these scratches, if 
any, this actually takes out. So all I'm gonna do is just dab a little bit of M105 on my uh, medium cutting foam pad with my Griot's Garage six inch, run over pretty much this whole uh, side, uh, passenger side, and see how many of those scratches actually come out from just the polish alone. So here we go guys, check this out. I'm gonna go ahead and stop here so I can contrast it kind of with these scratches. I don't know if you can pick these up in the camera, but there are some scratches right here that are like clustered where uh, I think she ran against a garage or something, some sort of uh, mailbox, I don't know, something you know that would leave this kind of thing. And the M105 has dramatically not only removed a lot of it, but masked anything left over. So in the camera, I doubt it will pick up anything. In person, I can see there's a tiny, tiny scratch right here. A tiny, tiny, tiny scratch right here. Tiny scratch right here. And as it gets closer to this crease right here, it gets a little bit more uh, kind of obvious because once again, these are deeper, like right here is completely beneath the paint, not just beneath the clear coat, but beneath the paint. So what I'm gonna do, because that M105 has, I would say removed about 80% of the scratching completely, it tells me that there's no need to wet sand these whole panels like this. So what I'm actually gonna do is go ahead and use M105 all the way down the passenger side between the tape because I've already taped off where the cluster of the scratches are and then after I've used the M105 I'm gonna go ahead and see what's left over see if there's anything specific that I need to wet sand that I know can be removed through wet sanding and then see what really is just going to be a level of permanent damage unless of course you take it to a body shop and things like that because there is going to be a level of permanent damage with something like this because once again not all scratches are the same all of it is a case-by-case -case, requires different things so I'm gonna go ahead and take the M105 and bring you guys in for the uh, finished look. All right guys, so I went ahead and finished. So I'll take you down the whole car just to show you guys kind of what's left over, what's not. So anyways, basically, <clears throat> I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up. It probably looks fantastic in the camera because the camera tends to be more flattering. In real life, you can see there are still some scratches like right down here. There's a deeper one. There's a scratch, there's a couple scratches right here, a little cluster of scratches that are very, very masked. So if you were to stand at just like a normal viewing distance, you would never see any of that stuff. It wouldn't even, I mean, it, it, it would be non-existent. But when you get up close and you get all detailed, you can definitely see that there are still just a few places where there are some scratches. So I'll go ahead and pan down the entire car here. Here's the passenger side, the front passenger side. Here is the back door. So you can see there's a dent right here where something has actually uh, like pierced through the paint itself. Um, but then you go all the way back and the paint really looks fantastic. Now, here is an issue with polishing, and here's a huge communication point. Because this car sits outside, it collects all the tree sap, bird droppings, rain, all that sort of stuff. So there are a ton of imperfections, and not to mention it's black paint, so it's gonna show everything. So now that I've polished this whole side, there, there's a contrast between what has been polished and then what is not polished. So check out the hood here. You guys can see that it's very, very dulled. There's like a lot of different spots, like tree sap spots, that have etched in, that have stained. But if you step back, you can see the hood has been extremely dull. There's a lot of, it's just very oxidized. And then you go to the side here, and it looks like completely new paint. And so there's this contrast, there's this juxtaposition that happens because I only polished part of this one side because that's where the scratches were. And so eventually, if you want to have a uniform appearance, you're gonna have to polish the entire car. So once again, that's a huge communication point that I wanna hit as I'm you know, doing this stuff, and especially after I'm done, is to you know, kind of examine this with the customer and make sure that they understand the nature of the beast, that on the rest of the car, there's still a ton of imperfections on the windows, a lot of etchings, a lot of bird droppings, of bug etchings, watermarks, all that sort of stuff, but here it looks almost new. And so, of course, eventually you're gonna wanna polish it, you're gonna wanna seal it, especially if it's sitting outside like this to protect the way it looks right now. So some of you may be wondering why I did not go ahead and wet sand some of those deeper scratches. And the reason I did that is because number one, the M105, like, I mean, it got rid of at least 80% of the scratching. And then on top of that, the scratching that it did not completely remove, um, it 
it did mask in a huge way, so it's very, very camouflaged. And once again, from normal viewing distances, no one would ever notice that. So the reason I didn't go that next step to wet sanding those few places is because I wanna make sure that this car and the paint and the clear coat lasts for as long as it possibly can. So a lot of guys would go ahead and wet sand because they wanna make more money, they wanna charge more, but I would rather make less money only polish it and camouflage those other scratches rather than make a few extra bucks and wet sand and take some of that clear coat down when I know in this situation in particular this car is going to continue to sit outside it's black paint it's gonna get marred scratched all that stuff even more so and I would rather communicate with my customer and say instead of me wet sanding away that last 20 you know 15 percent of scratching why don't we just polish get rid of a ton of it, mask the rest, and then when you're getting ready to sell it, we can polish the whole thing, wet sand those certain places, and we can wet sand at that point when you're getting ready to sell it so that this car and this paint lasts the full lifetime that you have it because that is what I would consider is in the best interest of the customer. So anyways guys, thanks so much for watching. If you would like to get your hands on the Griot's Garage six inch dual action polisher or the foam pad that I used or the Meguiar's 105, then I will hook up all that stuff in the description box below there will be Amazon links that will take you to those products and those tools. And if you do end up buying any of it, definitely use my links in the description box below that'll take you to Amazon because if you use them, it gives the channel a very small commission, but it helps this channel stay alive so I can continue to give out awesome content on a daily basis just like this. If you like this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, hook up all that stuff in the YouTube comments below. I always read those and I'm sure to get back to you guys as fast as I can. And if you're new here, then definitely consider subscribing because I come out with daily videos just like this one on products, tools, strategies, communication skills, business skills, and so much more, all in an effort to help the pro detailers become more profitable and successful in your auto detailing businesses. And on this channel, I share the exact strategies that allowed me to take my auto detailing business into a full-time income with only part-time hours. So if you're interested in that, definitely consider subscribing. Once again, thank you guys so much for being so involved here in the Wilson Auto Detailing community. And as always, from Luke, keep working hard, and I'll see you guys in the next video.